Hi, I'm Tom Hale. The tape you're about to see is an audition tape made in Bakersfield, California in February of 1994. About the time I made the decision that I wanted to return to the air to do the weather on television. Since then, I've lost 30 pounds and I've started working out and I can't wait to find a city to sink my roots into. Tom Hale's weather forecast has been awarded the American Meteorological Society's seal of approval. We started off pretty mild, 42 degrees this morning, and we're on our way up to a high temperature of 59 degrees. Here's the satellite picture of the United States, and you can see that front that's pushing its way into the middle section of the United States and the Great Lakes. The good news is that it moved through Southern California very fast, did not bring us a lot of rain. That was good news. We got a half an inch of rain. We could use it. And in Southern California, amounts of about a quarter of an inch of rain. The really good news is if you're a skier, they got a great deal of snow up in the mountains. And here's the other bad news. If you have friends that are in Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, or Pennsylvania, they're going to get an ice storm right down Highway 70 all the way into Pittsburgh. And you'll hear about it on the news tomorrow. Here's the local satellite picture, and you can see we've got shower activity up in Crescent City, right back up along the coast. But the good news is for us that we're starting to clear out. Now, yesterday we had talked about an impulse of clouds coming on down, bringing us showers, and possibly also creating more problems for Southern California. That is not going to happen. If we have a shower, it will be a virtual accident. Here's tomorrow's forecast. We have winds coming down the valley at about 15 miles an hour from the north. There will be some scattered clouds that you'll see tomorrow, but mostly a beautiful day, crisp, clear, breathable air. Uh, air quality, 40 PSI for those of you scientists out there. Otherwise, just good air quality to breathe. Morning low temperatures, going to start off kind of brisk. In fact, uh, Fraser Park which had snow this morning with uh, temperatures in the 30s are now going to be even colder because of clear skies. In the valley, 37 degrees across the board. Head up into the mountains, it becomes a little bit cooler, but then it warms up nicely into 44 degrees. Lake Isabel to Atchipi, 39, and about 20 degrees warmer than we start the day from 37 to 57 degrees as we warm up. It's just going to be a gorgeous day tomorrow. That's all I can tell you. Here's the way it shapes up. Oh, I have to hedge. I put a raindrop in here just because I thought it would be important to point out there might be one crazy shower to make me a liar, but otherwise it's going to continue to clear up and get better through Friday with highs going up to 58 degrees. And as we continue Saturday and skies really clear out, then the heat can radiate up into the sky. And that's where those of you growers are going to have a few problems because if your trees have been telling you we're going to bloom, frost may be looming on the horizon. Of course, as you get into the foothills, it gets a little bit cooler than these temperatures, which we're forecasting 33 degrees in the valley, which in the foothills could even be in the upper 20s. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. That's the way things are shaping up. And what's going on in sports? Ever since I was a kid, I've always had this strange fascination for weather. Eyewitness uh, News Weatherman has joined us this morning. Hi, Tom. Good morning, Rob. Nice How storm you, you gave us this hey, morning. Hey, I loved it, too. Weathermen get excited about this kind of weather. You You're know the only one, Tom. No, oh, we all do. There is no weatherman I know in business that doesn't get up when a storm comes and just run to the window and press their face to it. <laughs> what is happening? What's going to happen the rest of the day? It's going to get nice. We are only going to be warm today because we started off so warm. If that cold front had come through in the middle of the night, we might have been 68 degrees to start off the day. And then we... Nice. Yeah, and then we wouldn't have warmed up to maybe 88 degrees, but... Uh, it's going to be hot all day. Yeah, it's cooler today. Oh, well, that's good. That's, it's going to be about 92 degrees, 93 degrees today. So much cooler. That's cooler. I feel better already. <laughs> Tomorrow, though, we'll probably be about 88 degrees as it looks. Oh, and that's yeah. good news, and uh, we may even have a dry period for the next week. Dry? I don't mind dry. dry. I don't mind the dry. I just don't like the, the rains coming through and all that humidity. Well, it makes you irritable. Oh, when, the pressure, when the pressure falls, your irritability goes up drastically. They flew people in planes before they sent the astronauts up to check out. Is that weapons. right? That's right. It makes you very irritable? Indians used to attack just before the storm. Thanks for being with us, oh. Tom. All right, that's Tom Hill. Please, Rob. Hank Aaron was supposed to be here. He couldn't make it. He's got back problems. We'll see you tomorrow on AM Chicago. What? It's always been my dream and goal to produce the most visually stimulating weather presentation in the country. And I, I bet you didn't know, in 1979, I produced one of the first moving weather maps through the use of film animation. The show finally started to move itself down southeast through the Green Bay area, and then cold air pushed in behind it, and that literally caused cloudiness and more shower activity in the form of snow to explode back into the Dakotas and Nebraska. Then along with that, heavy winds came into play in the Plain states, causing near blizzards 
blizzard conditions, some of these winds in Nebraska were reported at 50 to 60 miles an hour, and along with that, cold temperatures. Why, Cheyenne, Wyoming yesterday had a high temperature of 66 degrees. This morning they woke up with 6 degrees, and also we're right, right now reporting temperatures of minus 10 in the Dakotas. Along with that, we have warm air, which was supposed to make this storm a lot worse to come up here and help feed this storm, but it just never made it here. Along with that, this storm's going to slowly move its way in here through the night tonight, and as it does, the showers will end and the winds will come in. This is Hale's Hut. Now, if you're a diligent person, you've been out there shoveling away, and tonight we'll see maybe as much in the UP area as two to four more inches, and you may still continue to shovel away, but it may be to no use because by morning, Hale's Hut and the driveway are going to be covered with snow because the winds coming down are just going to blow that all around and rearrange it. Now, for the day tomorrow, the western half of the state's going to start clearing out. Now, sometimes the weather maps don't always jive, and I've been known to stay up all night just to figure it out. The way the satellite view looked last night. Remember last night we talked about the satellite. I said, here is a large area of disturbed weather, but it is not organized into a depression. So we have a very large area of disturbed weather, and the Bermuda High was pumping all that moisture over us, bringing us cloudy days and showers. And of course, who would have thought that the storm was going to develop into what it did? Well, by 1 o'clock in the morning, I had my first inkling, and this is what it was. See this kind of curve shape? You can almost see the beginning of the rotation of a low pressure system forming about 75 miles off of Tampa. And as the evening progressed, well, by 4 o'clock in the morning, we were looking at radar and trying to track this storm. And at 4 in the morning, here's the way time-lapse radar captured it. Now, I want you to look right down here. Watch this up here as it starts to move up, and it actually starts to rotate. See, some of these are moving back this direction. That's the beginning of the low. Now, we had a power outage, so we had to freeze on this one. But take a look right here when it starts up at about 9 o'clock. See that hole? I'm going to follow with my finger all the way out. See right there? There she goes all the way off. That is the center of it, actually kind of the eye of the situation. And by about one o'clock in the afternoon, it had broadened out and kind of dissipated. It still did leave some shower activity down here for which there was a tornado watch in effect till five o'clock. Now let's take a look and see where it is right now. This is the latest satellite picture. We show it right off the Carolina coast. The air pressure in the center, if you have a barometer, look at your barometer, it is 2938. Besides putting together exciting weather forecasts, Cass. My other love is kids. I love going to schools, doing school talks, and talking about science, math, and weather. With a little help from the local parent teachers organization, over 400 kids from Laurel Hill Elementary in Hanover Park took time out from classes today to learn a little more about the world around them. And so, with a little help from yours truly, we all started preparing for the big event. How long have you been waiting to do this? What's going to happen? Well, we're going to let go of the balloons and they're going to blow way up into the sky. They are, eh? Think yours is going to go far? I don't know. Where do you want it to go? <laughs> to Streamwood. You have friends there? Angie. And then it was time as over 700 weather balloons raced into the wild blue yonder. Today's experiment is similar to what the National Weather Service does every day in trying to collect upper air weather data as high as 50,000 feet above the earth. Each kid paid 25 cents for their balloon, and of course, the balloon that flies the furthest is gonna win a prize, but to find that out, you have to help out by taking the postcard attached to it and signing where that balloon landed down. And maybe you might even find mine. Tom Hale, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Go, balloon, go! Now that was fun. I also enjoy getting involved in community events, doing my weather live on remote, and when the weather's breaking, I love being on the scene.